Hi everyone, this is Vineet Pandey here presenting one of my most awaited work, Wasteland. This work has been written by T.S. Eliot, published in 1922 in the magazine The Criterion. This magazine was famous for presenting the complex works of 20th century. This is the reason that Wasteland was published in this work. And remember this thing that Wasteland is actually something that represents 20th century. This is the reason a lot of students find a complexity when they try to read it, when they try to understand and relate. Wasteland is a beautiful example of pasties which represents postmodern technology, postmodern techniques, postmodern writing style. Along with this, I also want to convey that there are three special videos dealing with the summary of Wasteland, the all story related to Wasteland, then introduction of T.S. Eliot, who is T.S. Eliot, why he wrote Wasteland, and then what are the most important lines asked in Wasteland. A lot of exams have some lines taken from Wasteland. So I have given all the information in three different videos. Make sure you watch all of three videos and you will be prepared with Wasteland and you will have not to study anything against or apart from these things. This video is enough related to Wasteland. Thank you so much and don't forget to share your comments. Hello everyone, this is Vanit Pandey and in this special lecture we are going to talk about T.S. Eliot's Wasteland. So we know about T.S. Eliot, a great writer, a great critic, a great poet and also known as the 20th century renaissance man means just like Philip Sidney was the renaissance man of Elizabethan age, Eliot has been called the renaissance man of 20th century modernism. He described himself by calling, he said, I am a classicist in literature, a Roman Catholic in religion and a great royalist in politics. Means in his political uh, methods, political opinions, he was in support of royal class, royalism, and then in literature he was in support of classicals and he converted himself to Roman Catholicism. His childhood was awesome. His mother was also a writer, a teacher and father was a businessman. He was born in the family of a Unitarian minister. Remember this thing that his father Henry, Henry Eliot, he himself was a son of a Unitarian minister. His mother, she was a writer. She wrote several books including a biography her, of her own father-in-law. Though Eliot was one of seven siblings, he suffered from hernia in his childhood. And this was the reason that he was the favorite child of his parents. Now please remember this thing that the first influence was her, his own Catholic nurse. As they were from rich family, Eliot's father arranged an Irish lady to be a nurse for T.S. Eliot during his hernia time, his uh, troubled time. And this was the first ever influence of Catholicism on Eliot. So they may ask you a very tough question that Eliot became a Catholic in 1927. He became he got converted towards Catholicism. But what was the first reason behind this thing? So that Irish nurse was the first reason behind this thing. Now remember this thing. That he initially was an Anglican but it's 1927 he completely took his side towards the conversion in Catholicism. Now please remember this thing, that his first marriage was not a happy marriage. He was married to a lady known as Vivian Highwood. Vivian Highwood was a kind of eccentric person and later she was taken into mental asylum. Last time she was crazy, last time she was in a madhouse. Mein diya gaya tha. So though she was a happy, a happy and happening lady, but having the fringy anxiety and other issues, later Elliot left her and she died in the mental asylum. After this, he got married to his own secretary Valerie. Valerie was the secretary and uh, he lived his happy life with her. We are talking about you know why that why what led Eliot to write about the modernist uh, content in his poetry. This is the influence various types of influence on his mind. Now remember this thing Eliot himself suffered the nervous breakdown. In 1921 he was suffering from nervous breakdown because of his wife's condition having issues with his first wife and this was the reason that he himself took the help of medical counsel, he took the help of psychiatrist and he was somewhere lost for two months. So it is also like known as the lost years of T.S. Eliot. He met Ezra Pound after the lost two months and gave a manuscript known as Wasteland. Remember this thing that Wasteland's manuscript, it was written in very, uh, you know, hundreds of pages. I can simply say it was a very big work, a very, you know, mammoth kind of work. Thanks to Ezra Pound, Ezra Pound uh, made flexible changes and uh, did some edition and sometimes he, you know, omitted some lines, some paragraphs, some complete pages. 
and finally converted wasteland in present day uh, present day status like to, today we have 433 lines and if we add the last line shanti 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 it becomes 434 lines now wasteland it itself is a grand work of 20th century remember this thing that atkins a famous critic atkins he calls it an all elusive compact he says wasteland is an all elusive compact now chotter bryant c h a u t e r chotter b r a b r i a n t chotter bryant calls it mona lisa of english literature mona lisa's portrait if you remember the most beautiful portrait but nobody understands the reason of mona lisa's smile a secret smile so wasteland has been called the same thing it's beautiful but it's very harsh and hard to understand this thing it's mysterious it has complexity and confusing and moreover the compound its structure of wasteland is very confusing every line every sentence is a kind of pastiche p a s t i c h e the postmodern term where you collect material from various sources and just put them together so t s elias had taken thousands of references 35 big allusions five different languages he has used in his expression and mixed all together so wasteland is a kind of amazing compact design of writing skill remember this thing wasteland is famously divided in five parts the burial of the dead the game of the chess then fire sermon death by water and what the thunder said remember this thing for its you know this is very rich in content very rich in re- uh, references very rich in allusions but that's all disorganized and this was the reason mr f r lewis called wasteland a rich disorganization now remember this how to go for the five parts of wasteland and not to be confused in the exam i have developed my personal met- method known as jalebi method so the uh, all the south indian students i hope you know what is jalebi it's a north indian dish it's a sweet dish and if you don't know jalebi please do google immediately jalebi j a l e b i sweet dish so you'll find out how jalebi is prepared and made so the very first thing is burial of the dead so burial of the dead is like we bury the people who are dead so in jalebi we can take this uh, compound with the uh, you know the ingredient that we have merged and mixed and now we are taking that ingredient in the hand and we are burying that thing in the oil which is you know boiling to tel mein jab hum usko jo hota hai maida ya jo bhi hota hai whatever you know usko banate hain that is burial of the dead then when you actually dip that in the oil we make the round 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 shape of jalebi so remember that round about shape that is game of chess because this is how we are playing so that's a game then what are we doing we are boiling it in the oil so that is called fire sermon once it is properly baked what do we do we take it out of the cauldron and we dip it in the sweet water that we call chashni so that's death by water and when it's dipped in chashni and it comes in your plate you eat it and you take a kind of you know sound you know the when the stomach is full and the automatic sound that comes we call it dakar in hindi that is called what the thunder said because the dakar is like thunder so if you remember the jalebi method you will never ever forget the five points or a five structure of wasteland this thing has been asked in net exam to set them in order and a lot of students they do the mistake so you don't have to do any mistake like this just remember the jalebi method now the important themes though i will also give you the detailed lectures on themes the important themes is like barrenness theme of barrenness means wasteland is full of hollowness shallowness he talks about the loss of physical mental spiritual barrenness elet says that we have lost the spirituality we have lost the rejuvenation we have lost the youth the energy the green life we actually have become hollow shallow like we are very much materialistic we have no time for god no time for society so the first thing that you have to write down is barrenness it's very very important because when he starts his poetry he says april is the cruelest month breeding lilacs out of the dead land so he says that once april was the beautiful month if you remember chaucer canterbury tales april is the month of showers so once april was a beautiful month once april was known for love for journeys for romantic things and now april has become so cruel because everything is full of deadness everywhere it's just death which is visible so this is how he takes the allusions second thing is rootlessness he says that we have lost our roots in culture we have lost our roots in families 
we are no more connected to each other friends apply this life just think we have mobile phones but we got separated earlier we didn't have mobile phones and we were connected we would get so happy having a joint family now we have mobile phone and everybody even even in delhi i sometimes see in the restaurant five people eating together have five different mobile phones and not talking to each other i feel like what is happening this is actually the part of culture study that's also known as post humanism cyborg manifesto the next one is communication gap communication gap is in three things man to man communication means man talking to himself a communication within talking to his soul you know that's that's called conscience uh, you know the soul over soul conversation that's a gap then man to society we have no time for each other we don't speak to each other and then man to god we don't communicate to god so there are different types of communication gap then the concept of death in life death in life when you read the poetry you will find out there is a line the corpse uh, you planted last year have they begun to sprout he says that that we are bowing we are you know actually sowing this deadness so if you sow the deadness you will reap the deadness so that's what he says that even in the life it's deadness visible everywhere so those who pretend to be alive are dead i met a person i met a person he was spending 16 to 17 hours playing pubg for me he was dead though he was breathing so that's the message that if you have shallowness rootlessness no love for each other no empathy for each other then you are dead alive the next one is life and death this is reflected in the fourth part death by water where the ancient faith of regarding you know the effigies effigies which were immersed in water they would come back so immersed in water they would come back means the effigies or the idols if you remember the indian tradition of uh, murti visarjan ganpati visarjan so we uh, you know immerse these things in the water with the hope that they will come back rejuvenated uh, come back with youth and will bring prosperity so that is also the message here that the death itself can be the reason of a new life sometimes we give it a chance to start it once again so death death itself can be the rising of a new life then there are so many other myths because the narrator is sometimes ts elit himself then sometimes it's tarishes then sometimes it becomes a uh, fisher king then sometimes it becomes haitian girl so there are so many narrators but whenever they question you remember answer this that tarishes is the narrator because elia admits that is it tarishes who is the narrator tarishes was a blind man who was given a boon to see the future now remember this thing the myth of fisher king fisher king was the one who raped nuns and Christ, uh, and was given a punishment to be impotent forever so he is also known as the wounded king he was attacked and you know injured on his genitals he is no more able to have intimacy to produce children and that's why and moreover he is always bleeding so he is known as the bleeding king the impotent king that shows the infertility that shows the fertility myth then we have fisher king uh, this is the fisher king myth then after this we have icarus myth icarus with his father didalus was in the prison didalus was a great craftsman didalus started collecting the wax from the walls of this guard uh, jail prison and he collected the wax and made the wings of the wax icarus and didalus they used the wings made by wax to flew away so they flied and uh, you know escaped from the prison but icarus was so happy to find a new power of flying he started challenging the heights and his father didalus warned him that please don't go too close to the sun because the the hot the hotness of sun the heat of sun will actually melt it away but icarus didn't listen to it he kept on trying to challenge sun he went too close and his wings melted away he fell down and died so where he actually fell down it is known as icarus uh c icarus c or icarus c remember this thing the icarus myth is that we are challenging ourselves and which is leading us for our doom our damp you know our fall so one must not try to cross the limits now what we have done with nuclear weapons you understand this thing that today we are scary scared of nuclear weapons especially if people like kim jong people like trump or the you know isis what if they have nuclear bomb so they can uh, target anyone then haitian girl is showing the lust haitian was a boy he has been called a girl here he was a boy loved by the god 
so jews was in love in the love with this bo- uh, boy but there was another god jafer jafer the god of west wind so he was also in love with the same boy and he was je- jealous of him so one day jews was playing with hashian but west wind killed him while playing so this is the reason that it shows that the lust uh, has surpassed the love and its jealousy jealousy is resulting in all types of uh, bad things all types of killings and all then here we have indian mythologies indian mythology indian myth means the philosophy taken from upanishads and here we have da 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 datta damita dayadavam now remember this thing that datta dayadavam damita datta means data data is to give to give to donate to sell, uh, share and enjoy together dayadavam is to have pity to have uh, you know emotions for each other and damita damita is mean daman daman means control to control your desires to control six senses so that you can always be in the lap of god lap of you know you have a spirituality by controlling your desires your seven deadly sins so this is how wasteland talks about so many things now remember this thing and i'll be giving some advanced audio on the text and important lines of wasteland so that you can remember all the important lines of wasteland and some other details and some other important themes and characters till then continue with this lecture thank you so much may god bless you